Hey guys, it's Chili here, and I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. This is going to be a quick mini tutorial on NuGet and SFML. First of all, a disclaimer. This is not going to be a hold your hand, wipe your ass, newbie tutorial. This is just a quick intro to some useful tools. Uh, I expect you to be able to do your own research and figure out the details of this shit. I'm not saying, you know, don't ask me any questions. I'm just saying I might not answer your questions if I deem them to be something that you could have Googled on your own. So don't get pissed off if I don't explain every little thing here. I might take some more looks into this SFML stuff later if there is a very large demand for it. But right now, I'm just going to give you a quick intro on how to set it up and get running. You should probably have some experience with Visual Studio and C++ before you try this shit out on your own. General rule of thumb is maybe after you've seen, you know, tutorial 22 of my beginner series. Alright, so Nougat, or Nugget, and uh, SFML. What is this bullshit? Well, first of all, let's start with SFML. Stands for Simple and Fast Multimedia Library. You can get that. It's basically a framework like the Chili framework, only it does more shit, right? It's still relatively simple. It's not as simple as the Chili framework. It's got a lot more parts to it, but it's still pretty simple in the greater scheme of things. But you can do a lot of shit with it. You can you can render text. You can render sprites. You can load them from files. You got basic shapes. You've got a sort of basic camera viewport system with clipping. Uh, you got sound. You've even got a pretty decent networking uh, library in there. So you got a lot of shit. And another big bonus is it is multi-platform. So you can develop for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X pretty much uh, without changing too much shit. You can build shit for all these different uh, platforms. So that sounds, you know, pretty awesome, right? You might say, well, why even bother with the fucking chili framework? Why not just use this? And the answer is, is that the framework was basically made for learning. It's a vehicle for the tutorials. It is super, super simple because all you basically got is like put pixel and then like, you know, keyboard and mouse. Uh, and because it's super simple, it makes you implement all the graphic stuff by hand. Draw a rectangle, draw a circle. You've got to code that shit up yourself, and so that's how you learn a lot of stuff. Uh, in SFML, there isn't really any easy way to put individual pixels on the screen, so it doesn't. it's not as suited for the kind of tutorials that I'm making. So yeah, the framework was made for learning, but not for coding up a substantial game project. Although, people have made some pretty substantial demos in it. And, you know, the limitations of the framework can often make people more creative. So you might say, Chili, you're not, you're not being clear here. I'm getting mixed signals. Which one should I choose? And I say, choose the Chili framework if you're experimenting with graphics ideas and you need put pixel level control, or just for, you know, simple practice shit and of course for following the tutorials but choose fsfml if you're gonna make a pretty substantial game project and i'm also gonna say that you know i want i want people to still make shit in the chili framework kind of brings the community together and so stuff made in the chili framework is gonna have a much higher chance of you know being featured in some of my videos because that's what gets people interested in the tutorials and shows how much you can accomplish with those simple tools and I'm also going to give a lot more support for, you know, people who are making stuff in the framework because, you know, that's my thing. It's kind of my responsibility in a sense. But I do believe that you should be coding up shit in both. It's going to give you a broader experience of, you know, frameworks and libraries. And it's just, it's just going to broaden your horizons. Now, question two is, you know, what is NuGet? Well, NuGet is just something that allows you to bring libraries and, you know, other dependencies into your projects very easily. You know, like look at SFML here. If we look at the learn link here, uh, tutorials and getting started for Visual Studio, for example, you know, there's there's a, there's a, a, quite a few steps here, shit that you can get wrong setting up SFML to work in one of your Visual Studio projects. It's not a super complicated process, but it's also not trivial. But with NuGet, it's basically just a couple of clicks and you've got code, you've got a library, you know, integrated into your project and working. You can just get going. So NuGet is fucking awesome if you can find the packages for the thing you want. So I'm going to show you NuGet and we're going to use NuGet to put SFML into a project or solution and we're going to build a, you know, a basic hello world for SFML basically. So first things first, let's create a project. Uh, we're going to create an empty project. Uh, it doesn't have to be, let me, well, let me show you here. Let's create a project here. 
and with Visual C++, we just want an empty project. Doesn't have to be Win32. Doesn't have to be console. Just empty project is fine. And we'll call this one, I don't know, NuGet SFML. There we go. Beautiful. Create. Yeah, that's good. Doesn't matter. Now you click OK here and it's going to create the project for us and it is empty. There's no files in our shit. So now let us, first of all, let's incorporate uh, SFML into our bullshit. So we go tools, we go NuGet package manager and we go manage NuGet packages for solution. Uh, then you're going to want to click to browse and you're going to search for SFML. And this is going to give you a list of packages, you know, that match that. Now, there's going to be a bunch of them, and some are going to be, you know, red herrings. They're not going to work well. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell which ones are going to work, but you just, you just got to try shit out and see what sticks to the wall, basically. Usually, I like to look at the number of downloads here to kind of gauge which is the most popular one, which is the one that's probably going to be the one that works. So, SFML has five modules, uh, system, window, graphics, audio, and network. Now, graphics depends on window and system. So if we install graphics, it will automatically grab window and system for us. And that's all we need for a basic test. Uh, so let's go, let's, if you go into here, you click, here's the name of our project, you click this checkbox here and you go install and it will pull it'll download all the code and all the bullshits that you need and all of the dependencies and see here it's done and we've got graphics window and system pulled into our project ready to go so now we're going to go project and we're going to add a new item cpp file just source type sure whatever it doesn't matter uh now we need to write some code now what i want to do here to make my life easier on the SFML page here, we click on learn and down, where is it? There's gotta be something here. Tutorials, API documentation. On this page here, it gives you a nice little short example program. And we're just gonna copy and paste this motherfucker into our CPP file right here. And there you go. And there's no red underlines here. And that indicates that probably we have now all of our bullshit header files installed by NuGet. And this should build, should build fine. Uh, unresolved external symbols, sound stream, music, right. Can you guess why this is a problem? We didn't grab the package for sound. And I'm not gonna grab that package, I don't care. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna erase the stuff here for the audio testing bullshits. Uh, Windows, yeah, that should be fine. Try to build that again. And this time it builds fine, no problem. Now, if we try to run that bullshit, we get nothing. I could see like a short message flash there, but I couldn't read it. If I put it in release and I go start without debugging, I believe it will hold... No, it didn't hold the window for us. All right, so what's going on here? We run the program and it immediately closes. Well, if we look at this first line here, uh, texture load from file, blah, 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 if not. So we're doing a test here. This is probably testing for success or failure, right? And if not, so if the return value is false, then we just return the program. We just exit out quickly, and that's why it's closing immediately, because this is failing. Makes sense since we didn't actually put an image into our folder. So if we right-click here, we go open folder. Uh, we, need to get, we need to get an image in here. And we need to get a font in here, Arial font, or whatever, doesn't really matter. Just as long as the name matches right. So I'm going to copy in here, Arial.ttf, and I'm going to copy a nice kappa. Uh, copy this file name. Paste it in here, like so. And if we build that, and we run it, there we go. We've got... Hello SFML and a nice little kappa face up in the corner here, just as what you would expect. And I mean, the basics of this shit, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go over it that much. Like I said, this isn't an in-depth tutorial about SFML, just a basic how to get it running with NuGet. But I mean, you create a window. You can specify the resolution here and the name of the window. Uh, you can create a texture and you load a file into that texture. You can create a sprite based on that texture. Uh, you can create a font. 
load it from a file, and then you can create text based on that font. And then what you can do is you can load the, you can draw the sprite, you can draw the text on the screen. There's a whole bunch of other fucking uh, functions for this stuff. For example, sprite. If I go sprite dot uh, move, and then there's going to be an offset. So let's say I move the sprite by a hundred, nah, and a hundred. What do you think that's going to do? That moves the head down here. So you can move your sprite, you can freaking rotate your sprites, uh, you can scale your sprites, you can do the same thing with your text. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through all of the bullshits here. This, this isn't an SFML tutorial per se, but one of the major bonuses of SFML is it has really good documentation. So you can go here in the documentation, the learn uh, link here, the API documentation, you can look at the classes. And here's a list of all the classes, or all the main classes that you use, you know, to do your bullshits in SFML. There's a whole bunch of shit in here. And so you can look at, you know, this basic um, example here and you can look up sprite so you can look in here and you go where's fucking sprite where is it i don't know where it is so you go control f and you go sprite and here you go you found it it's sprite and here it shows you a sprite and sprite inherits from drawable and transformable uh you can go to drawable and here are all the things in SFML that you can draw. So you can draw shapes, sprites, text, and vertex array, which is kind of advanced. And then in shapes, you got circles, convex shape, and rectangle shape. So basically, you got these shapes, sprites, and text, and that, you, that's all the things you render. And with that, you can create a whole, you can create most 2D graphics bullshits with that. And if you click on any one of these drawable class types, you can see, you know, all the functions that you can perform on them. So you can set their position, set their rotation, scaling, you can set the origin of the image, and you can get all the shits, and yeah. You scroll down, you get some, you know, examples sometimes, and you click on one of these functions, and you get an explanation of what it does. And after that, it's all just about you. You take that information, you try to code it up, you try experimenting, seeing, trying different things, seeing how it works. And that's how you fucking learn shit. They've also got some tutorials here, so you can read up on this stuff. And it'll give you, you know, guides and code that you can test out and learn about different topics about the basics of SFML. And there you go. You, it's not a hard, uh, it's not a hard library to grasp. And if there is a lot of demand, I'll probably make some SFML videos. Who knows? But anyways, uh, that is how you use NuGet to pull SFML into a project. And that's the basics of you know running your first SFML project. And if you got any questions, comments, of course, you can, you know, ask me on the Discord, on the forum. Uh, I might answer. I might not. Someone else might answer. Uh, there's a lot of other people there who use SFML, so you can maybe get some help there. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, if you want to see me maybe make some more SFML content, you know, leave a like, leave a comment, and it might happen. Uh, until then, I'm Chili, and I will see you soon with some more C++.